Erika Zini presenta Book Mania. Interviste, anticipazioni e consigli di lettura per il tempo libero. Go tell a friend. Book Mania, dove il libro è protagonista. Una buona serata a tutti e bentornati all'appuntamento con i libri. Oggi sono molto felice di poter parlare di un romanzo che eh, mi ha appassionato molto, di un'autrice che già conoscete, si intitola Gli Osservati di Jennifer Pashley, pubblicato da pochissimo per la casa editrice Carbonio. Un libro che è un giallo, un noir, è davvero tantissime cose insieme, ma ne parleremo e qui abbiamo un ospite speciale con noi, ovvero l'autrice. Diamo quindi subito il benvenuto a Jennifer Pashley. Hi Jennifer, thank you for this interview. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to talk to you about The Watcher. Hi Erica, thanks for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Your book starts with alleged murder in a small town on which Kateri, the new detective, is investigating. What is the genesis of this story? Was it inspired by a fact that really happened? It was not. Um... It was, it sort of grew out of, um, I used to live in a very wooded area and um, I came at one point came across a house that looked abandoned and it wasn't, it actually had signs of life inside, but, but from a distance, it looked very, it looked abandoned. It looked like the woods were taking it back. Um, So I sort of, you know, you sort of go through the what ifs there of like, you know, what could that story be? Um, and it sort, of, it sort of grew out of that, that sort of that mystery or that wondering about the abandoned house. In uh, The Watcher, we can say there are two protagonists uh, with uh, two points of view. Kateri, the new detective in the small town of uh, Spring Fall, and Shannon, a boy who is uh, accused of killing his mother. Apparently, the two are very different. In reality, Kateri has a past that allows her to understand Shannon well. What can you tell us about them? In particular, Kateri is an uncommon and meaningful name. Um, they... They are similar. I, I felt like that was her strength as a detective um, was that she wasn't somebody who was outside of Shannon's struggle, right? She's familiar with where he comes from. She sort of, she sees him as a person as opposed to just a person to arrest or a person who has committed a crime or, you know, the sort of town loser or something. Um, so she has a lot of, she has a lot of empathy, I think for Shannon in particular. And I think people who sort of get caught up in that lifestyle that seems to allow them nothing but crime, this sort of like repeated thing, you know, his dad's in jail, he's going to end up the same way. Sort of there's no other outlet for somebody like that. Um, and I think she recognizes that and she has sympathy for it. And it, it leads her into directions that other detectives might not have gone. Um, as far as her name, um, I, her name is actually a Native American name. Um, And I, I gave that to her. There's, I live fairly close to um, a shrine to St. Kateri um, who grew up, you know, in upstate New York. Um, but I kind of, I wanted to give her a name that was um, very, very much a part of here. Like, the, like she was more a part of here than anybody else. It's like right out of the land kind of. Um, So I wanted to really ground her in that way to this sort of, to this, to the space because the, the landscape and the, you know, the, the weather and the sort of roughness of being in the woods, it's beautiful, but it's, but it's harsh. Um, I wanted her to have that sort of right in her being. So that's why I chose her name. 
it's a, a strange and beautiful name for Catherine. <laughs> we, we know this. In your story, it is evident how a person's past and the prejudices that are formed influence the present and the idea that people have of him or her. Catherine, we can say it with no fear of spoiler, knows it very well. Readers are also prompted to reflect on this. Prejudice is an important theme in the book. Was this one of the topics you would like to discuss about with this story? Yeah, I think... Um... I mean, I think at this point in the story, you know, by the time we pick up, Kateri is new to town. And so she has, she's a little bit of a mystery, right? They want to figure her out. The rest of the, the rest of her department sort of, you know, secretly looks into her past and sort of tries to figure out what it is that, why she ended up there. You know, why did she take this job? Why did she move? away from the city, um, but she's sort of outrunning her own prejudices, right? All of the things that have been known about her at home, all of the, you know, the, the sort of family drama that she comes from, she's, she's, try, she's making a break from that. And on the other hand, Shannon is sort of caught in that thinking he can never get out of it. He can never be in a place where somebody doesn't know exactly who he is and who his family is and who all his cousins are. <laughs> you know, it's a very sort of, um, it's a small enough community and these families have been there for generations that he doesn't, they, he hardly needs an introduction. Like people just know who he is. And the same is true for a lot of the other people in the town. So I feel like that it's that sort of longing for, for a fresh start, this sort of, um, you know, wishing that there was a situation where someone didn't know everything about you, which is, I think, part of the appeal of Shannon meeting Bear, who doesn't know and sort of starts from a, you know, from a clean slate as far as his, because he's also new to town also, you know, doesn't have the same mm -hmm. level of knowledge about everybody. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of um, sort of fighting against that, I guess, like a, a sort of wishing that there, that it, there wasn't that built in prejudice. The female's portraits in your book are very true. I really enjoyed the Kateri characters. Uh, she is so strong and so fragile at the same time, so honest and objective. But I found another character very touching, albeit uh, not without the flaws, Shannon's mother. A woman, uh, a woman who has suffered a lot in her life, which, uh, however, she has carried on with the strength and uh, determination. What do you think about her? I, she's very, she's a very complicated character. She's very easy to dismiss and dislike. Um, but on the other hand, I think she's doing what she knows how to do to survive. And at some level, she, especially, you know, once her daughter was born, sort of, just became all about saving that relationship. Just whatever I have to do to keep this kid safe. Um, to the point of isolating her, you know, to the point of not ever really letting her out into public or, um, you know, protecting her in an extreme way from the outside. But I feel like her you know, her motivations are okay. It's the execution that is bad. Like she goes about it in a way that is a terrible mess. Um, but this is also, you know, this is also a woman who had her first baby at 17, you know, um, you know, was potentially sort of overpowered and, 
and trapped by the options that she had um, and tried to escape and couldn't, um, which is also sort of, that also becomes a, you know, a, a, a motivating factor for Shannon that he, he doesn't want to end up the same way. He doesn't want to end up trapped in the same patterns that his mother is trapped in sort of, you know, just navigating poverty, being, you know, addicted to painkillers, um, always having been on disability, not having anything that seems like a career, just having, if you have a job, it's a dead end job. You know, it's not something that you aspire to do. He doesn't aspire to be a dishwasher. It just sort of is what he can do to make some money. Um, so I think there's, I think they're actually very close. I think Shannon's close to his mother, despite their differences and the struggles that they've had. I think they have, there's a sort of tenderness between them. Um, but she's, she's had a lot to struggle against. And, and it's sort of, it's sort of the opposite of a redemption story. You know, she doesn't, she doesn't struggle through it and then come out on the good side of it. She struggles through it and it kind of defeats her which is true, unfortunately, for a lot of people in that situation. Yes, and in your book is also a sometimes ruthless portrait of a society obsessed with both success and failure. What do you think about it? I think that it might be, um, that might be one of the things that's, that's sort of uniquely American. Um, <laughs> very concerned with success, very concerned with, you know, how far can you get? How much can you make? How, how powerful can you be in your, you know, your business or your career or whatever? Um, and then also sort of pointing out and focusing on people's failures. And there's not a lot of talk about what happens in between. <laughs> There's sort of the very, very successful and the very, very not successful. And then there's a whole ocean of people in between um, that, you know, that not much is said about the sort of day to day people just working their jobs and raising their children and, and you know. Um, so there is this sort of like, I, I always kind of feel like the, the drama of a story like this happens when those things intersect. So when you have, you know, the very rich or the very successful in proximity with the very poor, there's a spark. Um, you know, and same thing with like the very powerful and the and the the people who don't have any power at all, um, or you know, clashes between things that that come off as opposites. Um, so that was definitely that was sort of the spark of all of the conflict of the story. Aside from the, you know, the crime, there's the crime and there's the murder, but the, 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 the struggle that's happening in the story is actually happening on a class level. Um, and, uh, you know, and on a, a, there's also this sort of struggle between um, you know, like the straight characters and the queer characters that there's this sort that also sort of like what's perceived as normal and what's perceived as marginalized and how, how truthful you can be or how, um, sorry, my dogs are barking. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a point of struggle for Shannon, I guess, because he does, you know, because he feels like everybody knows him already and so the sort of adding this level to his identity is a struggle for him to also admit that it's because it's such a closed such a such a prejudiced society to begin with it's hard to sort of have varies on that um so that same is true for it's part of the reason i feel like um that pearl continues to hide her daughter because her daughter is potentially the only kid in town that's not white. 
so there's also that sort of hesitancy to be open about it. Birdie, the little bird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, finally, um, what would you like the reader of your book would keep uh, with them after finish reading your book that is so rich? I, I, I think for most of the things that I write, this was definitely true for the, for the scamp also. Um, I want certain, I want there to be a certain reader who feels seen after reading the book that there's, you know, that, that the book would reach someone like Shannon, who is a reader, you know, and, and sort of reads to try to find himself somewhere to try to find that representation. Like there, how are there no stories about me? How are there no stories that understand what I'm going through? Um, so my, you know, my great hope with all of these books is that they reach somebody that it means something to that they, where they see themselves or they see their family or, you know, the terrible things that happened to them as a kid or the, you know, how difficult it is to be um, the different, you know, the black sheep in a society, in a, especially in a small town, you know, where it's, where it feels very closed. Um, so that's my, that's the thing I hope that people get out of it is that sort of sense of recognition. Like I see, I see myself there. Uh, we have another question. Uh, we, we love the Kateri um, so much. We will uh, read uh, other books about her uh, with the protagonist Kateri. I hope so. Okay. Um, yeah, I, um, I wrote that book in, you know, with, with more books in mind that she could have more, you know, more adventures. Um, hopefully she can find, you know, she can find some romance. <laughs> <laughs> It would be nice to see her um, be taken care of a little bit. She's so, she's so independent and she's so, like you said, she's, she's also sort of fragile at the same time. She's got a lot about her that's broken. Um, it would be nice to see her in a relationship where somebody really appreciates her. Yeah, she deserves it. She does. <laughs> yes. At this point, uh, we have to thank you for this interview and uh, feel free to send a message to your Italian readers. I, I have been so thrilled with my Italian readers. It's, it's been amazing to see um, reviews from book bloggers and, you know, sometimes people who just send me messages. Um, I feel like they really understand these books and their, their readings of them are, are sort of deep and passionate. And it's just a thrill for me to read um, their thoughts on them. So I'm hugely appreciative of my Italian readers. <laughs> Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Erica. Erica Zini presenta Book Mania. Interviste, anticipazioni e consigli di lettura per il tempo libero. Go tell a friend. Book Mania, dove il libro è protagonista.